Hey everyone, Wolflord Row here. I hope you all enjoyed Angron Week last week. The planning for the next week's special is already underway. But on to today. Today we're discussing something that's always been fascinating to me. After the infamous rubric of Ariman was cast, just how much of these former proud warriors remained inside the hollow shells of the rubrique? What is life like within their minds, if anything is left at all? And why even me as son of Russ has a whole new level of sympathy for them. Spoiler warning to begin, we are going to be discussing lore from across the Warhammer 40k universe, and in particular, the short story All Is Dust by John French. As always, I really recommend you read the story for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. Not only that, we help to support the Great Games Workshop and Black Library, because without them, we don't have this amazing lore to talk about. I will put a link in the description as always. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So recently I purchased Ariman the Omnibus and finally got a few minutes to start it over the weekend. And already I'm hooked. Ariman has always been a fascinating character. And of course nothing defines him more than the casting of the rubric of Ariman. After Russ and his wolves devastated Prospero, Magnus and his thousand sons sought refuge on the planet of the sorcerers within the Eye of Terror. And it was here that the mutations of the thousand sons grew ever more out of control. And so it was that Ariman, in his desperation to save his brothers, cast his rubric, and forever doomed his legion. For while yes, he had in a manner saved them, in doing so, their bodies had crumbled to dust within their now sealed armour, and their minds had been stripped. Only the most powerful of sorcerers had survived, with their mind still intact. Magnus was obviously furious, at the fate of so many of his sons turned to dust, and his wrath was boundless. He was about to kill Ariman for his sin, only to be stopped by the words of the chaos god Zinch himself, for it had all been one of Zinch's schemes. But Magnus, not to be undone, banished Ariman from the Legion instead. Forever would he walk the stars, on a never-ending quest. But it's always been something of an intriguing mystery to me. Just how much of a mind do the rubrique have left? Just what goes through their heads? If anything, are they prisoners on the inside looking out? Or genuine blank slates? Well, in the short story All Is Dust, we are given a fascinating glimpse inside one of the rubrique's minds. And the very first line sums it up brilliantly. Only dust remains. Dust and emptiness. I do not know what I am. I had a name. But it is gone. I am nothing. I am locked in darkness. Tumbling without end. Through broken memories. And this truly shows the effect of Ariman's rubric. They have had their very identity stripped away, and now exist in a world of nothingness. We see a memory come of blue sky and gleaming pyramids, both laced with fire. The burning of Prospero. Which, you have to imagine, is the strongest and most powerful memory a thousand sun can have the loss of their homeworld, and being cast out by an emperor they loved. The moment of true decline for the Legion, an event that forever changed their fate. He remembers fighting the Space Wolves, though they are just nameless figures in grey, any reasoning for the encounter so too lost. 
The fleeting feeling of mixed emotions comes over him, of joy and anger as he fells his enemy, of the heat and pain of battle, a battle that he knows nothing about. Gone as quickly as it came, the falling in the darkness returns, because that's all they have, falling in darkness and fleeting unknowable memories. And man, if you've read the Thousand Sons heresy novel and seen their story through their eyes, this is truly tragic. Regardless of Magnus, just ignore Magnus and his actions for now. For the simple average legionary of the Thousand Sons that became nothing more than these mindless beings who did nothing but remain loyal to the Emperor. This is how they spend eternity. Falling through darkness. Drifting from one nameless scene to the next. From memory to memory. That may as well belong to somebody else. True grimdark 40k at its best right there. But then we're given a glimpse of what happens when a thousand sun sorcerer reaches out to the rubrique. Hello, Isidorus. The voice comes to me out of the black night. I know the name, but I do not remember why. And then, the memory of the rubric comes, of the effects of the spell burning his skin inside his armour, his very body being eaten alive, before nothing. Again the voice reaches out, and light breaks the darkness, pulling his mind towards it. Again and again he hears the name, each time something in his mind stirring, the words sounding familiar, recognising the name but not truly knowing why, and ultimately remembering, it's his name. And the world around him awakens. Now in this particular story, the world is a battlefield. But truly, it always will be. The rubrique are destined to be brought from battle to battle, protectors of a sorcerer using his former brothers as automated bodyguards. And in awakening, the rubrique lays eyes on the sorcerer who awoke him. Instinctively, he protects him, all without truly understanding why. And we even get to see how the rubrique view the sorcerer who summon them from the dreams. They see them with a golden light shining within, and their robes fluttering with power, as if the wind is circling all around them. The sorcerer is more real to them than anything else around them. They've been called from the darkness by this figure. The rest remains as vague and emotionless as the dreams of their memories that they drift between. And so too, in time, this will become too. And man, I have to be honest, it's these little glimpses into the lore that I absolutely love. To see what goes on in the mind of a rubrique, and then how they see being summoned, how they view the sorcerer that commands them. This is why 40k has such a depth that other universes struggle to match. Something so simple. Yet here in the Warhammer 40k universe, we get to see it firsthand. But as always, the more I learn, the more questions I have. Like how would a rubrique view Magnus? If they awoke on the battlefield and saw Magnus, if bound to another sorcerer, would Magnus still glow with golden light? I mean, you'd expect him to be like a star. But these are the things that drive my curiosity. Would there be a part of them that stirred in sight of their Primarch? Would they, despite it all, still feel the connection to their gene father? Could Magnus summon the whole legion of Rubrique, and would they know him as their Primarch? These are the answers I need. But most of all, the biggest question I have is do the Rubrique have to relive the effects of the spell burning their bodies inside out every single time they are called from their slumber. It's not explicitly stated here, but it does appear to be the case. 
as this one was called, he instantly reverted to experiencing the effects of the spell, feeling the rubric burn him from the inside out. Man, and if that's the case, my sympathy for the Thousand Sons just went to a whole new level. Not Magnus, I'm still a son of Russ after all. But man, come on, this is a brutal destiny for the sons of Magnus, who just followed in the footsteps of their father. But as always guys, what do you think? What small moments in the lore do you always have questions about? Do you have sympathy for the rubrique of the Thousand Sons? Or in their arrogance, do they deserve to suffer? Did the folly of Magnus truly lead them to this destiny? Will Ahriman ever finish his quest to free his legion? As always guys, leave your thoughts in the comments below, I love to read them. Huge thank you to all my subscribers, your support really means a lot to me, it truly does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off and I'll see you all again real soon.